Um, thank you guys for joining us on the earlier session. And um, we're going to take about the next 30 minutes or so to take you through how to make sites do more than hang on the wall. Um, if you've had any one-on-one -on -one sessions with me and you've talked to me about your websites, uh, I'll have some agents say to me from time to time, Hey, Rolson, I want to make sure that it's generating leads for me and it's doing different things for me. And I say, yes, that's very possible through the websites. They are awesome tools, but they're like a fine restaurant. And the worst thing you can have is a fine restaurant and a great chef, and no one knows about your restaurant or your great chef. Um, so the, the first step in making sure that your sites do more than hang on the wall is you want them out there in every bit of marketing that you've got. Um, use your site as the catalyst for driving people back to you at all times. Um, and then the site will help you cultivate them into leads and into future business. So with that said, Kristen's going to take us for a walkthrough of how to how to do more with the sites, putting it all together with our CRM. And uh, so now I'll hand off to Kristen Fredericks, our digital administrator. Go for it, Kristen. Thank you so much. All right. So we have been talking quite a bit about um, not making the websites just a digital business card. Um, they can be set it and forget it, but we should never set it and forget it. We should actually make them work for us. So our websites do a lot of things, especially once we can get people there. Um, but I wanted to give you a couple of tips and tricks for making sure that you can get people to your website. And then I want to show you kind of the, the natural steps that you should take on your website when you're introducing someone um, to the tools that you have available to make sure that they keep coming back um, and to make sure that they keep getting information from your website. So making it a valuable tool. I'd like most of the websites to become your right hand assistant if possible. Um, as Ralston mentioned, one of the things that we need to do is make sure that we're driving traffic uh, to your website. A couple of things that you should make sure that you're doing. Um, make sure that your all of your signatures are set up with your um, website in them so that people who get emails from you can just automatically click on something. Make sure that your website is in your Instagram bio. Um, you can't put links on Instagram, but you can put them you can put them up in your bio. Uh, make sure that it's nice and easily clickable. Um, we've talked about uh, Facebook and Facebook compliance a lot lately. Make sure that you have your website link in your about section. When you are uh, looking at your Facebook compliance um, for your personal page, um, if you're having to do any of the updates for fair housing and adding your equal housing language and things like that, um, it's okay to go ahead as long as you have that equal housing language and those disclosures in your about section, even on your personal page, uh, to go ahead and add the link to your website there as well. Um, give it a call to action. Um, search all the homes in the area. Get more information. Get reports. Save your favorites. Um, do all of that thing. Hey, so Kristen, as your yeah, go hey, ahead. Kristen, can I jump on top of that real quick, just to remind yeah, everybody of the the ethics of your social media? Uh, the new law that was just passed in November added to the code of ethics, reminding you that you cannot separate your personal from your business. So please make sure you do have all those backlinks mm -hmm. on your social media to your fair housing disclosure, to your realtor disclosure, to your equal housing opportunity disclosure, uh, your DPOR requirements, DPOR disclosures. If you do have any questions, shoot an email to training and uh, we will make sure you um, uh, have all those disclosures uh, correct and adequate on your social media because uh, with the new rule and regulation from November, your personal is just as responsible as your business pages now. So, okay, thanks, Kristen. You're welcome. So this is a, it's a great time as everybody is doing all of their compliance updating to go ahead and add um, a little bit of marketing on top of that too. Sorry, Tim. Um, and making sure that we can actually drive people to your website as well. So as you're looking at your marketing plan, uh, for 2021, look at all the tools that you use. Look at your social media, look at your signatures, look at your email, look at your postcards that are going out, look at your, um, I mean, look at every piece of information that you're sending out there and make sure that your website is on it and make sure that you put a call to action, letting people know what they can do on your website. 
So as we continue to drive traffic back to your website, I want to show you kind of the logical steps that you can do when a client actually comes to their website, uh, comes to your website and what's available to that client when they come. Okay. So one of the first things I want to do is I want to go ahead and look at that client section. When you receive a new lead or, an, or you add a new contact or you see that somebody is recently active, there's a couple of steps that you should take to make sure that you're getting the most out of your website. I'm going to go up here to clients and I'm going to go to the contact list. And I'm going to, we have a lot of contacts in here. Actually, here's me in my own training account here. And I'm going to show you that we've added a bunch of, of people on here, but there is um, there's kind of a logical step that you can take by looking over here on this left hand side button and kind of going step by step. So I'm going to pretend that I have come through my own portal and I have landed on my agent website. And I have um, I've re either requested some more information or I've signed up for something or filled in something in a lead page and I've been able to get this information. Um, maybe this is somebody who stopped by an open house and you wanted to add them to your CRM. Um, maybe this is somebody, you know, that you've, this is a referral from somebody else and you've added them to your CRM. I'm going to put as much information as I can possibly find on this person in these boxes. And there's a reason for that. Um, one of the things that we have are automatic drip campaigns available to us through town central. And you'll want to go ahead and have as much information in here as possible because those drip campaigns can be used in different ways based on the information that's in there. So I just had a birthday and my birthday is one six. That was a fun day. Um, and we can go ahead and add that because as long as I have a birthday in there, it's going to be able to send that. We can set things up to send that birthday card out. It's just another touch. Maybe this is I'm going back and adding somebody to my website um, that's a past client. I'm going to go ahead and catch up my list. If I know when they actually close their home, I can put that in here and it can actually add a home anniversary. So maybe I closed on this client. We're just going to pretend on 1130 last year. In fact, you can add the year if you'd like to. You don't have to add the year on birthday, obviously. Um, but it can send them a home anniversary card. Uh, maybe they are married and you know this wedding anniversary. Just another touch point here. I'm going to go ahead and add an anniversary here. Okay. Of 4 7. You can add all of the second contact information as well. And make sure that you're adding this because I wanted to really point this out. See these two buttons here? This is new. We added this last year. Um, one of the things that came up was I can't send an email to a spouse or an investor or a partner or whatever it was. And we said, okay, um, let's get this fixed. So we went ahead and added these two buttons here so that when you set somebody up on your website to receive property updates or receive any of that marketing that you're sending out, things like a newsletter or any other type of drip campaign that you you want to set these people up for, um, you, that second contact will be able to receive that. So I'm actually going to put my significant other in here for real. He is going to love the fact he's going to get emails from me today. He's getting used to this by now. And I'm going to say, okay, I want him to receive all of my marketing. And I also want him to receive all of our property updates because we're obviously going to be buying our next house together. So we should receive these emails together. Okay. Don't forget that as you're adding information in here to go ahead and watch out for these Cabernet buttons. These Cabernet buttons pertain to each section. If I was to go through here and add this client information, I'm going down and I'm going to say, okay, what type of person is this? These are this, this thing. And I, and I get all the way to the bottom and I hit save changes down here. It's not going to save everything above it. So when you get to the end of a section, so here's my client information, make sure you hit update contact info. If you've made any changes above it, and it's just going to save that section for you. I'm going to keep coming down because I want to show you why some of this information is important when you put it in here. Um, you can choose, um, again, an email salutation or a label name. When we're talking about developing a professional relationship with someone, we often know that we don't call them John and Jane or, you know, is this example. Um, in this case, we would be Kristen and Shelton. Most people outside of a professional's thing don't call me Kristen. Most people call me Chris. So, if I, my realtor would probably be introduced to me as Chris, not Kristen. And we would want to change that even though that's my formal name. And I could go ahead and change this. 
so that every single correspondence that went out was something more personable. So if you have them in here as, as Richard and you always call them Ricky, um, you can go ahead and change that. It makes it look like that you're sending something out uh, personally versus something that's coming out from an automated system. We wanted to make sure that this looked as personal as possible. You can also change the label names. Okay. This has become, um, this became an issue with our label names because we have a lot of doctors and doctors. Um, we wanted to make sure that we could make sure that people were labeled professionally. It's not unusual for people to have different last names like we do. Um, you want to make sure that if you're going to go ahead and print labels out of here, um, and by the way, the system does print labels if you needed them, um, that their label name uh, is appropriate in whatever you'd like it to be. So you can go ahead and put that in there. I'm just going to go ahead and leave that for now. And remember, we've come to a new Cabernet button, so we're going to go ahead and update that communication. And it's going to go ahead and save just that section. So here we've saved the changes up here, we've saved this. And we're going to get down to the lead information. And some of this is going to be important here um, because all of the, the websites, uh, when you're working in your business planning and you've seen some of those business planning charts that are on the dashboard in Town Central, it's coming from this kind of communication here. So what what am I as a client? What is this client? Are they active? Are they incubating? Are they, uh, are they, are they to an appointment status? Are they an offer status pending or closed? Based on how you have this client in your system is going to be how it affects your business planning. And it can also segment people so that when you're sending out some of those drip campaigns, you can only send them to active clients or you only send them to people who have closed or only send them to people who are incubating because that communication might be a little bit different. So all of this are kind of, these are foundational steps to getting your website to work for you. Okay. And then we're going to select the contact type. I'm going to make this person a buyer. Okay. And I'm going to show you why that's important in just a second. And then we have options here. So if you've attended any of my other training um, classes and you've known about that we talk about drip campaigns and email distributions, um, one of the things that we talk about are things like, um, do you want to send them the monthly newsletter? What kind of what kind of people are these? Um, you can segment your people into as many groups as you want. Um, so your people could be um, sphere of influence. I met them at an open house. Um, they're people in my neighborhood. They're people in my church. They're people who um, are eventually going to be moving out of town. They're military. Think about all of the different labels and tags and buckets that you can put people in. Um, and as you start to develop marketing for them and as you start to send people more and more things from your website to drive traffic back, um, it's going to be important to have those people segmented out. Um, in this case, I'm going to say I met these people at an open house um, and they're prospective buyers for 2021 and they're also prospective sellers for 2021. So in this case, we have a house to sell plus we're going to buy and we met somebody at an open house here. We've come to another Cabernet button. Going to go ahead and hit the changes. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and scroll down. And... I'm going to come to the end here. I want to make sure you notice this, that if you want to be able to send your client information about property updates from your website, you'll want to have this button checked. This is to allow access to Property Watch. This is a really important button because as you hit save changes, not only does this mean you can send updates to your client from Property Watch, but something that puts your website to work for you is it also creates a buyer portal. So a lot of agents are not using this feature in here. This happens to be my buyer portal. So I'm in here as a client. I have, I have completely left town central as an agent at this point in time. By checking that box and hitting save changes, my agent, so Mary agent here, has set me as a client, Kristen Fredericks, up with my own dashboard on her website. This is a phenomenal tool that a lot of people have missed that is available in our website. And we have a seller version of this coming this year that we're really, really excited about. So making your website work for you and not just hang on the wall. This is a great place to be able to send your clients that says, I'm going to put you in my system. You're going to have your own dashboard um, to be able to communicate with me and to save your favorites and to show your saved searches and to send me, you know, email correspondence and notes back and forth. Um, you can log into here at any time and be able to 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 send me things. 
essentially. Um, so it's going to give, this is my client dashboard. So it's giving me my history. So right now I have, um, I've got a couple of saved searches in here. Now, remember, I'm a client, so I'm interacting on this dashboard as myself. I can set myself up on a new search. I can go and save more favorite properties. I can get updates on things. So in this case, I don't have any updates today so far, but under my saved searches, here would be my new listings. Uh, for my favorite properties, maybe I've saved five or six properties in the system that I just love, and one of them has gone under contract. It's going to show that to me here, or maybe one of them has been reduced by $10,000. It's going to show that to me here in my dashboard. Okay, okay. Kristen. Yeah, go ahead. Um, Heather Bass, would you go ahead and unmute yourself and tell us what you want to see again, please? Hey, guys. I... Could you show me how you got back to this again? Like what did exactly did you click on? So this created, so your client would have received an email once you went ahead and saved that, that they had access to property watch. And this is the dashboard that they would have access to. Okay. Thank you. Okay. But I'm going to show you how this interacts with your dashboard in just a second, but it makes more sense to show you what they can see as well. Okay. All right, so we're again, we're on the client dashboard side here. I'm going to go back to Town Central real quick. All right. And this is going to, all that information that I saw on the client side pertains to all the tools that you have available to make your website work for you on this left-hand side here. So I'm in Town Central. I'm acting as the agent. I'm working with my client, and I'm trying to give them information. So I'm going to click on this web activity button over here on the left-hand side. All right. It's going to show me everything about this client. Now, whether I've added this client or this client has come to me, um, whatever they happen to be doing mm -hmm. on the website is going to show up on this left-hand side so, or on this right-hand side, excuse me. It's going to show me all the activity. So this particular client has saved seven favorite properties. They have two saved searches. Um, they've sent me information from a contact form. They've requested more information. Um, they've come in, they've sent me information from a lead page. If you open this, it'll actually show you all of the forms um, they have submitted and what was in those forms. Okay. I'm going to drop down here. And it's going to tell me what I can do with these, with this client. This should be kind of like a checklist for you on getting your client interacting with your website and things that your website can do for your clients. So the first thing we're going to come to is a market watch report. So I don't have a market watch report set up for this particular person yet, um, but we can go ahead and create one. You'll notice that you have these create buttons on the right hand side. Okay. If you don't see those create buttons, it's because you haven't checked that box to allow property watch. Okay. That property watch is what enables that that portal for your people to to um, to access, but it also enables you to be able to create things to send to them. So you can go ahead and create a market watch report. Now, a market watch report um, is exactly what it sounds like. It is a market trend email that goes out. It doesn't have any updates on property. So it's not going to send new listings and pendings and properties that have new photos and things like that. It's actually going to send interesting trends and interesting stats about a marketplace. This is a really easy one to create, and it's super fast. So if you've talked to somebody who's come to your website and um, maybe they know about they know where they want to be, they know where they want to sell, you know the area that they live, um, you can set up a market trend report, again, as another touch point to go ahead and send to them. I'm just going to go ahead and hit that create button real quick. And it's going to send us to... Again, we're in Town Central, but it's going to look like our website search here. And we're going to be able to send market trends on a particular area. So in this case, um, I happen to live in Smithfield. So I'm going to set up myself for a market uh, market watch report for the area of 23430, which is, happens to be where I live. And if I hit view market stats... This is the email that goes out. So it's going to tell me the number of homes for sale. It's going to tell me the average list price, the new on market, listings off market, sold homes, average sale price. It's going to give me some, it's going to give me some charts in here as well. Okay. 
And I'm going to go ahead and schedule those email updates and give it a report name. Just remember when you give things report names, to make sure that it is something that you would want your clients to read and also informative. Um, don't use that annoying client um, because that report name will show up in their client dashboard and it also shows up in the email that is sent. So in this case, it's the Smithfield market. How often do we want to send this? Um, you have options here for every week, two, three, four, or every three months. Um, so this is also a great tool to use for incubating clients. If you have other touch points with them during the month, you may want to set them up for every four weeks. Um, if it's a client who's trying to decide when they want to sell this year, you know they're going to put their market or their house on the market, and they really need up-to-date information about what's going on in the market, you might want to set them for every week. And then it's just going to go ahead and automatically pull in the client. If I click this box, it's going to send this report right now. This is a great way if you're having that conversation with somebody for the first time or if you're updating your database and bringing people in um, to go ahead and send them that report just to give them you you already have that January touch point with them. I'm going to go ahead and hit save report. And I'm going to go back to my client activity page. So I'm back on mine. So here's my prospect, Kristen Fredericks. Remember, I'm on Mary Agents Town Central here. She's my agent and she's working with this client, Kristen Fredericks. And notice that I have a scheduled market watch report now. So I'm getting trends on the Smithfield market. And it was sent to me on 1-14-2021. So it was sent immediately and I'm going to receive that every week. Okay. You can set those market watch reports. Um, for a very large area, you can set it for a subdivision, you can set it for a zip code. If the area is too small and if there's not enough data, it's not going to be able to send something. So we, we really encourage you to try to set it maybe as low as a zip code right now, um, especially because there's not a lot happening. Well, there's a lot happening on the market, but not enough happening to, to provide a lot of data for it. It's also, so I'm going to scroll down here and it's also going to show me my website activity. So this is showing me that when my client logged on, they added a favorite, they saved a search, they saved another search, they added a favorite. It's going to show the most, the 100 most recent activities on here. So as we start to drive that traffic back to the website and as we set people up for things, it's going to start to give us insights into what they're doing online. It's going to start to give us some insights onto into what they're looking at. And it, it helps have those conversations, especially if you have a client who says, I'm never going to buy a house with a pool, never going to do it, never, don't even show me anything. And then all of a sudden you see their late night searching and they have for the last week clicked on the most gorgeous house. It would be perfect for them. And it has a pool and they swore they'd never see it with, you know, see a house with a pool in it. But here they have clicked on it 50 times because you know they'd love it. It's a great way to open up that conversation with them to say, well, what about this? Um, it's a little big brother, but it does work great. And it allows you to have those conversations with people. So again, we're just going through our to-do list here. So here's our searches and email notifications. Uh, this client happens to be set up on two right now, one for Smithfield and one for Isle of Wight County. Um, super easy to create a save search for people now. So I'm right in that client. I'm just going to hit the create button. We're going to go right back where we were with market, with that market um, stats. And the difference is, is we're going to use this button instead, the save search. I'm going to do a nice, easy save search for today. Um, I'm just going to put in, since I already have Smithfield and Isle of Wight County, I'm going to say we haven't been able to find what we wanted. So we're going to expand our search to Suffolk. And I'm just going to go ahead and go to Suffolk and put in, I'm just going to make something nice and easy, put in a price range, maybe 400 to 700 in Suffolk. Hopefully there's something in there right now. All right. And Kristen, we have, a, we have a question that just popped up too. Um, go ahead. Can other platforms be integrated into this, i.e. Zillow Leads? Yes. So we have something available called Zillow Tech Connect. Um, so if you're receiving Zillow leads, um, we have the ability to send the Zillow leads directly into your website CRM so that you can start working them from your website instead of working them on Zillow. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
if you want to pop that into my um if you want to pop that into chat or for Austin, you can note that we can send the we can send the specs on the Zillow Tech Connect um to whoever asked the question. So um okay, let me get back here. So I have Suffolk and I've put in a price range. I'm gonna hit save search. And Facebook. Got it. That work? Yep, okay. we can do both. Um the I'm going to put this in here for Suffolk and remember we're making this something very logical so let's say Suffolk 400k to 700k something the clients would understand and it's going to give me some options uh, when do I want to receive this I would say 99.99% of the people want to receive it immediately right now in this market because it's so hot and we've always had this question come up um, about whether the um, whether the client or whether you want to receive a copy of all of this. So make sure that you are checking things for, for receiving copies. I'm going to hit submit. And again, I'm just going to hit go back to that client activity page. I'm going to scroll down and now notice that here we are. So we've had our to-do list here. We've set people up for some safe searches. It was super quick other than, you know, we just had a couple of criteria that we put in there. Um, if we needed to set up some more searches, we're just going to go ahead and hit that create button and we're going to go right back and we're going to go ahead and add a couple of more save searches in here for them. Okay. And then I'm going to come down and you'll be able to see the favorite properties that your people have saved. Okay. And notice that we have a rating system on here. So um, I pretended that I was this client in here um, and I clicked on this one and I rated this as five stars. I loved this house. I can click on any MLS and it's going to take me to my website and it's going to open up that house that I was looking at. So if somebody, if you got a notification that one of your clients had rated something as five stars and sent you a note, you would get that notification um, to your email box or to your text and you could take a look at this. And so we actually looked at this property, um, Autumn Farm Road, beautiful house. You could say, yes, this is, you know, well, I didn't think they would like this because it, the neighbor was a little bit too close, but they've rated it as five stars. It's a great way to communicate with your clients and kind of let them um, help control their, um, you know, their home search a little bit, get them more actively involved. So that's kind of your to-do list on that side for setting up your people on um, things that you can give them as, as far as touch points and tools for them to work with, especially if they're buyers. I am going to go back. I want to show you what that email looks like when it comes in. This happens to be my real email box. And I received a property update for the Smithfield property search. Remember I said to make sure that you labeled that as something that the um, the clients could read because it would show up again, and it did. So my other searches might be Isle of Wight County or it might be um, Suffolk 400 to 700K. It's going to show up right in that subject line for them. And they're going to go ahead and get this email, Kristen. There are following properties have been updated or added to your property watch Smithfield. And it's going to go ahead and this one is on a training account, but normally there would be agent branding down here at the bottom. So every single email was branded to you and directed back to your website. This one happens to be a training account, so it doesn't send out the branding. So as a client, I could go ahead and click on this property and it would take me automatically over to the agent website. It would log me in automatically and it would show me that property. And remember I said that if they clicked on that and they went over to your website and looked at something, you would be able to see that in your client dashboard that I had clicked on something and I had looked at a property that came in from an email. It's gonna show up on that website activity, okay? It's also gonna record, I'm gonna go back to the main dashboard here. It's also gonna record here on that recently active. So there's one recently active person. So as you're going through your day and hopefully you have all of your people loaded into town central and you're sending them things because as you send them things and they come back, we're able to record that. So we're able to see who your hot prospects are and people who are really working the system. You know, it's amazing. Sometimes we get into, um, you know, an agent one on one and we realize that they have people recently active on the website that they thought might have been dead leads or wow, I haven't, I, you know, we haven't shown them property since March of last year when everything shut down, but all of a sudden they've gotten really active again. It's a great way if you can track when those people are active because you have them set up on these save searches and these market trends and this email stuff that's going out to them and you can see when they're coming back to the website. It's a great way for you to be able to pick up that phone and say, 
hey, you know, we haven't talked since the pandemic hit. I know you guys were waiting, you know, for things to calm down before you decided to buy. Um, you know, I would love to, there's so much on the market right now that you were looking for. I would love to show you some things. And you would know that because they've been receiving your emails all along. They've been coming back to your website or they decided to come back to your website when they were ready or when they were kind of thinking about the fact that they wanted to go ahead and buy or sell their home again. It's a great way not to lose those people. Um, and and how often have we have we seen that, especially in, in the markets that we've had where something came in or you've been working somebody, but they haven't received those touch points. They haven't received that communication. And then you find out that they bought from somebody else or they listed their home with somebody else. If you were able to head that off at the pass because you saw that they were their, their search was escalating or that they were getting a little hotter, they were thinking about coming back into the market because you could see that they were opening emails from you or see that they were searching on things. Um, it certainly makes it easier to retain that buyer, retain that seller. And that's and one of the reasons you can make your website work for you is because you can actually see when when that changes for that individual person. So I'm going to click that recently active real quick and it's going to show me it was this client who was recently active. And I can click into them. It's going to take me right back to where I was with that client. And I'm going to be able to go to that web activity tab where we just were. And I'm going to be able to see what has this client done recently? Okay, this client viewed that listing. And remember, we just looked at that. Here's that viewed listing right there. Okay. We can scroll down again. We can see everything we've done for them. They have them on a market trends. We've got them on a search. We've got them on a save favorites. So, men, I'm, I'm in here as an agent. I'm working on this. But I want to show you what that looks like in the buyer portal. I'm going to just refresh this because we've done a couple of things on here. Okay. So I'm now looking at this from a client standpoint. Okay. I'm able to communicate with my agent, Mary agent. My Mary agent has sent me a new message. And what has Mary agent told me? <laughs> I just sent this before training, so it might not have showed up yet. Oh, I already looked at it. That's why. Well, that's what I get for doing that. All right, so I'm going to send myself another message again, um, but you can actually send notes back and forth in here. Um, your own clients can go ahead and set up their own market watches if they'd like. They can also set up their own searches. So this is a great way to say if you've had a client that has only been looking at Isle of Wight County or Smithfield or Suffolk from 400 to 700, maybe they haven't been able to find anything and they're thinking to themselves, you know, maybe we should try Surrey. And they take control of that conversation by hitting the new search button and they can go to a home search and this is on the public side of the website. And maybe they're like, well, let's like, you know, we haven't been able to find anything. Let's try, sorry, we weren't going to go out that far, but we really do need to move and we need to find something. So they're going to hit Surrey and they're going to save their own search. And I'm going to say Surrey here. And I want to be notified immediately, and I'm going to hit save my search. So the buyer has taken control of, of their search process right here. And they've added this search. They've gotten one of those emails um, that was just sent out uh, that I showed you, the Smithfield email. And they're going to be able to see um, all of the stuff from Surrey. The nice thing is, is on your side, you've now gotten a notification that said your client saved a new search. They swore they would never go as far north as Surrey to find something. But in this market, they need to move. There isn't enough inventory. They've expanded their search to Surrey. And they've told you that without having to actually have that conversation with you. You know that ahead of time and you can be prepared for that conversation with them. Okay. That buyer portal in here is also going to show their favorite properties. Remember, you can see the favorite properties on your side, but they're also able to, to take control of that conversation a bit and, and tell you that they love something. So remember, we saw that house that was a five star. So we saw this, that the client rated as a five star. This is our next door neighbors over here. They're actually pending right now. We're looking forward to our new neighbors moving in next week. So I'm going to rate this a three star. Um, I asked my agent a question on this. My agent would have gotten this as a notification. I love this one. Does the HOA allow fencing? If you know me, you know I love my dogs. I have to have fencing. Um, and it's a it's a way to have that conversation with somebody if you're working with a buyer. So you would have gotten a notification that they asked you a question or sent you a note. Um, I don't like this one. We're going to rate this a two-star. This is, um, it's just too big. 
we could say that too. Too big. Um, love the area. Is there anything smaller? So maybe we say this is too much square footage, but maybe there's something else in the neighborhood that, you know, is a thousand less square feet. And we can say, sure, let's take a look at something else. Okay. And we can do, we can rate all these things with stars. So this is a great way to have that conversation and make that website work for you by being more interactive with your clients and having them tell you what they love um, and do some things with your save favorites and having that dashboard. I'm going to go back real quick and I'm back at the client section in town central. And I've talked about the web activity, all the things that you can do to keep these people coming back to your website by sending them things. And I'm going to go down here to action plans. Um, action plans is just another fancy word for a drip campaign. And you'll notice that this person is already on the birthday action plan. They're already getting my monthly newsletters and they're on the seller action plan right now. So if we did not have this person at all, I'm going to actually remove the birthday plan so we can go ahead and add this again. We know that my birthday was 1-6. We got that information from them somehow. Uh, maybe it was just in a casual conversation when we said, you know, my birthday gift to myself this year is going to be a is going to be a new house. Oh, when was your birthday? Oh, it was last week on uh, on Wednesday. So we've gotten that information from a conversation. And we can go ahead and add them because we have that information to a drip campaign. So it sends them out an email on their birthday. So on this person, we're just going to hit add. And it's going to ask us what action plan we want to send to. So oh, didn't return, move my birthday one. So I'll go ahead and click something else. Why don't we click something about my neighborhood instead? Or we're going to send them the holiday series. So they get something on every on all the major holidays of the year. And we're just going to go ahead and hit save. So now that person, that individual person is subscribed to both the birth that is subscribed to the birthday action plan, the holiday plan, the monthly newsletter. They they live in my neighborhood. They're going to stay in the neighborhood. And so they're they're going to get some neighborhood information. And we also know they're going to sell. So they're going to be on the seller action plan. And of course, all of that is going to be information that's going to go out. You you may want want to send them this many um, automatic emails. This is just for an example, but I wanted to show you that that's your next to do when you're working with people on your website. So at this point, Mary Agent has now set up Kristen, who she met at an open house in her neighborhood and has had conversations with her. Um, she has set her up to receive a market trend of what's going on in the area so that when they're ready to sell, they're informed. All of that drives right back to the website. She set her up on, now we're on three save searches, plus they've set up their own. Um, and they are receiving emails all the time about new properties that have come on the market, pendings, uh, price changes, new photos. If it has changed in the listing, they're receiving an email and it's keeping that touch point with them. It's all branded. They're receiving the email. It's driving traffic back to the website. They are, you know, they have now have access to a buyer portal that's useful to them. It's a useful tool that they can communicate with you and they can save their favorites and they can help with their own search process um, and have this great tool that sets them up on the website. And this is where you want people to start to talk. You want to say, my realtor sends me this information and this information set me up on the property watch. You should see this great buyer portal that I have that allows me um, that I can save my favorites and I can talk to my agent on it and I can, oh my gosh, I can even rate the houses with stars on it if I want to. And they have that conversation and that's where you start to get word of mouth. We've also set them up on an action plan. So we know that even if they go a little bit cold and that happens, it happens. Um, they're still receiving that monthly newsletter. They're still gonna receive that birthday thing once a year. They're still gonna get neighborhood information. So even if they decide to stop talking or if they, they're not receiving anything or they're, they decided not to move right now, they're still receiving things from you. And again, all of those emails are driving traffic back to the website. So when you're talking about driving traffic back to the website, the benefit to all of this, besides the fact that it be, you become more useful, it becomes a better tool, it personalizes people to you, it helps brand people to you, is that the more you have people come back to your website, the more traffic you can drive back to your website, the more Google loves your website. So when we're talking about agents trying to get their pages ranked on Google, uh, the more traffic is being driven, the more people you're driving to it, the more Google says to itself and its algorithm, very simply, wow, people are finding this website useful. Let's 
pop it up in the search results a little bit higher because people are obviously using this and people obviously like it. The more traffic you're driving, the happier Google is with you. Um, so it's also a great way to get your websites up in the search rankings. Um, lots of different ways to do that, but this is one of them is to continue to drive traffic here. Um, so I wanted to take you through that whole process about what happens when you meet somebody or when you want to put in a buyer, want to put in a seller and all the tools that are available to keep driving people back to your website as soon as you can get them there. Um, this is a, yeah, go ahead. Um, I'd like to take a quick moment and I know we're running a little long, uh, but there was a great bit of feedback from Kimberly Denton in the chat uh, with regards to how she communicates with her clients. And uh, Kimberly, I don't know if, you, if you'd mind unmuting and just sharing that uh, real quickly with everyone else on the, on the session this morning or this afternoon. Sure, I'm happy to. Um, so um, the, the question was, what do you do when you're out and about and um, getting, <clears throat> getting this information on the mobile, on a mobile platform? So when my, this morning, my, I have a buyer who's active. They saved a house this morning. Active buyer needs to find something quick. I immediately uh, pulled up um, MLS on my phone. I looked up that the house was still available. I texted the agent, determined it was available. And then I just texted my buyer back and said, yes, it's still available. Does four o'clock work? <clears throat> and I booked the appointment. Um, I will go back tonight or tomorrow when I'm at my computer next, and I'll actually update the comments on the my favorite properties or on Property Watch. I'll do that later. But right now, my client wants to know information about the house. And so as soon as I got the email, I was immediately able to respond. Yeah, that's that's awesome. <laughs> that's a fantastic way of doing it, kind of managing uh, the time also. So thank you so much, Kimberly. I really appreciate that. Yes, I highly suggest using this to all the agents that are on there. It is game changing once you start using it on a regular basis. <laughs> yep, thank you. Krista? I'm I'm just about done. That was a fabulous piece of information on how to use this in a real life scenario. So, yeah. I'm I'm happy to take any additional questions or or talk amongst yourselves if you guys are using these tools and how effective they are for your people. So we'll start with any questions. Uh, there were a few in the chat, and I just wanted to jump back to one. Uh, Julian made a comment with regards to. Uh, making this where you don't have to log into t into Town Central for it. Um, and I think Kimberly adequately answered that. Uh, but we will still mention that to our developer just to see if there's something we can get, we can change with regards to that. Um, the, I'm jumping back just a tad bit. Can the client set up their own searches through the website? And Kristen, if you'd go on the front end of the website for me, it looks like you've still got mine up top. Um, and I'd just like to show everyone, Jennifer Vade had this question, how does a client actually set up their own search? Sure. So they can do it a couple of different ways. Um, if they already have an account, they can of course sign in or log in or actually create their own account. But a, a lot of times the, the natural way to do this is they are on a website, they're on an agent website to search a home for sale without being logged in. So I'm just gonna pop in here and Put 23430. And there's my 200 and 209 total properties. And I can save a search. Now, in order for me to save a search the first time, it's going to ask me for some information. I can either continue with Facebook and sign in with Facebook, or I can go ahead and add my email address. I'm going to go ahead and add my alternative one here. And I hope this hope this works. All right. Well, and it's going to ask me to now name my save search. So I'm naming it Smithfield. And I want to receive updates immediately. And I mean, I'm a, a normal consumer here. Yes, I want to be notified when there's a weekly open house. And hit save my search. Now I've I've saved this. I should have received an email 
um, on my email box that let me know that I've saved a search in uh, Smithfield. It's come from Ralston and it's going to give me my first 10 results and then it's going to have a button on it that says uh, view my uh, view all my results. Um, and it's going to give me some instructions for logging into the system as well. So once I get that, if I want to log back in, I can either click something in that email uh, or log in directly on the website and do the same thing. As long as I'm logged in, I can go ahead and save searches under that email and it's going to continue to send me, um, it's going to continue to send me save searches all the time from his website by whatever I decide to, to put up in here. So, um, okay. So I logged in and, oh, Ross and I had used this email address on a different class when we did it. <laughs> um, but here's my, here's my, um, my save search and my history on Ralston's website. Notice that here's my saved searches. I've got 86 new listings since the last time I, I came in here. Um, and I don't have any favorite properties on this one. But if I'm here in the buyer portal and I want to create a new search, I want to expand it, I just hit new search. It's going to take me back to his live website. Um, it's going to take me back to the map and it's going to allow me to create a new save search and save a new one for myself. The nice thing is, again, you're going to receive that notification on your end that I created my own save search. It's going to tell you what the criteria is, and that is also going to show up in Town Central under the client and under the web activity. You're going to actually be able to see it in there as well. So, yeah. um, the There was another, well, there was a set of emails with regards to uh, those who want to connect their current lead sources into the CRM. That is a wonderful thing to do, a great idea, um, and it's very possible. Uh, we will need just a bit more information from you, so if you don't mind, just email websupport at bhhstown.com. Let us know if it's um, And we will be sure to um, make sure that you're connected correctly um, and able to receive uh, your leads through the CRM as normal. Um, looks like uh, Julian and Kimberly are going to have a good chat uh, there. If, are there any other questions that we can answer for anyone else? All right, fantastic. Thank you all so much for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed this. Uh, the sites are so robust and it's it's nearly impossible to squeeze everything into an hour, um, but keep uh, attending these classes. We'll share with you as, as much information as we can get out in a session. Thank you so, so very much. Have a wonderful afternoon. Take care. Thank you, everyone.